Part 2, Worldwide Conspiracy. In our discussions with lawyers who deal with the FDA, we've asked why supplements receive such intense scrutiny when their safety record is so stellar. Some of the lawyers are positive and believe the FDA really does have concerns about our safety. Of course, they are dealing with individuals within the FDA who may have those thoughts. However, it is clear from a great deal of other evidence that those in power are not thinking about our safety. The old adage, follow the money, reveals far more sinister dealings. At first blush, the obvious, obvious money flow is to the pharmaceutical companies. Direct revenue for the U.S. supplement industry is about $22 billion. When you consider all the indirect effects of the economy, that figure escalates to about $61 billion. The revenue for the larger drug companies dwarfs that number. Merck alone has revenues of over $40 billion per year and Pfizer over $50 billion. Some of our sources who work with the FDA and the drug companies say these companies really don't care about the supplement industry. They say it's not about, uh, no, yeah, they say it's not a big enough piece of the pie for the drug companies to worry about. We don't agree. Uh, one, history of drug company collusion. There's a long history of drug company attempts to influence legislation against the supplement industry. Just look at what's been happening in Europe. According to the Guardian, uh, 9102, drug companies have a proven track record in trying to legislate the natural health business out of existence. In 1996, for example, the Ecologist magazine revealed that when the Codex Elementarius, the World Trade Organization body that sets uh, international standards for drugs, food supplements, etc., met, the German delegation put forward a proposal sponsored by three German phar pharmaceutical firms that no herb, vitamin, or mineral should be sold for preventative or therapeutic reasons and that supplements should be reclassified as drugs. The proposal was agreed, but protests halted its implementation. The U.S. and Canada are no different. The same Guardian article says, surprisingly, in the 1980s, the policy of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration was to reclassify substance supplements as medicines. This even led to a farcical situation which armed FDA officers would raid clinics looking for illegal caches of vitamins, but public protest forced a change and since uh, 1994 the U.S. has had a statute that guarantees both free availability of supplements and information about how they work. Similarly, in Canada, doctors in the 1990s were being struck off for prescribing vitamins and the government reclassified hundreds of herbal remedies as medicines. Following pu uh, public outcry, however, they were all later decla declassified. There is clearly a worldwide movement against supplements, but why? Are supplements really a threat to government? No. Are supplements a threat to our health? Obviously not. So what is the motive for attacking supplements? The only motive is money. And there are two obvious groups missing out on the supplements market. Pharmaceutical companies and the government. Two, drug company motive. The pharmaceutical companies make their billions on, on patented drugs. Supplements, however, cannot be patented because they contain ingredients from nature that man did not invent. So drug companies can't make enough money from supplements or sufficiently protect their investment in them to warrant moving into the market. However, that's not the biggest problem for drug companies. They can still sell supplements as well as any other company. Their biggest problem is in lost revenue. Supplements hurt drug sales. When people realize they can treat their arthritis more effectively with natural remedies, and they can do, do it without side effects, they stop buying arthritis drugs. When this happens for hundreds of ailments with millions of people, it puts billions of dollars off the table for the drug companies. 
when people opt for a supplement that costs pennies a day rather than a prescription drug that, may, that costs many dollars a day, the lost revenue for the drug companies soon goes exponential. A. A. Patents are expiring. Another motive for pharmaceutical companies to attack supplements is that their own pa patents are expiring. Once a patent expires, other companies move in with less expensive generic imitations. Expired patents cost the drug companies $50 billion a year in lost revenue. While pat yeah, patents have expired in the past, there's always been a pipeline of new drug patents to take their place. This pipeline, though, is growing thin. Drug companies are finding it harder and harder to come up with new products. As a result, there's been a huge consolidation in the industry. As companies look to acquire other companies with vi uh, viable patents, in recent years, however, even this avenue for replacing lost patents has begun to close. Pharmaceutical companies are looking for ways to protect their future. They see the writing on the wall. The biggest threat to their future in a world without uh, patent-worthy drugs is supplements. B. Bad products, bad management. In addition to expiring patents, the drug companies uh, face other difficult problems. One they've managed to sweep under the rug for years is, a major, is the major side effects their products cause. The public, however, is beginning to see the truth about drugs. When one in five hospital patients is injured or dies because of adverse drug reactions, people begin to figure it out. Add on to this the new revelations that placebos often work as well as drugs without the side effects and many people are beginning to see that this emperor has no clothes. Side effects are causing such a problem that drug company management is resorting to illegal and unethical business practices. The industry has sustained billions of dollars in fines each year because, because the companies market their products for unapproved uses. These actions are typical of an industry desperate to maintain its market share and stock price. So resorting to collusion with the government to outlaw supplements isn't a stretch. In fact, it could be the only way they can survive. C. Governments have motive too. What happens to the FDA if the drug company pipeline dries up? Its primary source of income dries up right along with it. Drug companies will pay the FDA approximately $1.2 billion over the next five years for drug approvals. With that kind of money at stake, the FDA itself has a vested interest in seeing the survival of the pharmaceutical industry. If the drug companies can't make it, one of the FDA's largest sources of funding is gone as well. However, that's not the biggest motive for the FDA. The FDA has in implementing its new approval process. Because supplements don't need approval right now, the FDA doesn't make a dime on them. There's nothing the, uh, the FDA would like more than to have a supplement companies paying the same fee for approval that the drug companies pay now. This is perhaps one of the biggest motives we see for the FDA to take action. They love the drug companies, but they love multiple sources of income even more. And ensures their survival. In Europe, the motive is so strong for government control and funding that the EU has already banned the sale of herbal remedies. The reason for the ban? The EU is concerned they pose a serious risk of interfering with pharmaceuticals. In other words, the EU couldn't come up with any safety issues with the herbs themselves, so they had to blatantly protect the pharmaceuticals and concoct fake interactions with drugs. Why not give people the option to avoid the drugs? Because the experts who were pushing the ban were members of drug company supported organizations like the Royal Pharmaceutical Society. <clears throat> of course the ban isn't a full ban on herbal supplements. Supplement companies can leave their products on the shelves until they, their expiry date. However, any new uh, batches or new products will have to go through an official approval process. Manufacturers will have to prove their products live up to strict production standards and have a clearly marked dose that is consistent and meets standard dosage requirements. 
Not only does the EU pr protect the drug companies with this new law, but it also receives a new source of income. We can expect similar laws to follow from the EU against vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. Why? Follow the money. In conclusion, in the name of public safety, Congress and the FDA are pushing hard to enact strict controls over the supplement industry. If they pass, these new regulations will essentially destroy the supplement industry and your ability to buy vitamins and minerals. Supplements have a proven record of safety, so there, there's a more insidious reason for the laws. It all comes down to money. It has nothing to do with your safety. In fact, passage of these new regulations will put your health in danger. Governments and drug companies have proved they don't care about your safety. This is one more insidious plot against freedom. Fortunately, neither Durbin's bill nor the FDA guidelines have become law as of this writing. We still have time to push Congress to kill Durbin's bill and pressure the FDA to abandon their draconian guidelines. If we don't stop them now, we are in danger of following, following the EU into more tyranny in the name of safety. Durbin's bill currently sits before the Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions. The cha chairman of this committee is a strong supporter of supplements, Senator Tom Harkin, a Democrat from Iowa. Please contact your senators and encourage them to support Senator Harkin and Orrin Hatch, another strong supplement supporter, in defeating this bill. At the, at the same time, push your congressman to pressure the FDA to abandon their tyrannical new guidelines and let the FDA hear from you as well. If their draft guidelines become the agency's official guidelines, our supplements could soon be gone. I'll be back with another section of this, and it's uh, called Structural Pliancy. Think about it. Peace.